antelope moon, golden dates, desert flowers. There are hundreds of words to describe the beauty of African women. No wonder they strut like queens throughout the world, head held high, full of grace and elegance. Much time has been dedicated to this subject, especially the amazing hair creations. One finds works of art based on ancient knowledge. African women possess an infinite abundance of cornrow hairstyles. On the river Niger in Mali's capital Bamako lies an important center for hair art. Bamako means crocodile back. While the indigenous animals retreated, more and more humans surged to the metropolis. In 1960, Bamako had 100,000 inhabitants. Today, it has around 2 million. Many of these are women who every two to four weeks have new hairstyles conjured onto their heads. The transient masterpieces bear such marvelous names as Bogo Tiginu or Dembaku, meaning on the go, serpent, or mango blossom. It's hardly surprising that men get inspired to make such compliments as your beautiful hairstyle makes me blind to your flaws. Even pop stars and political heroes such as Shakira and Mandela are cited. Humor is also not neglected, with some hair creations referred to as crooked or Congo rat. And as in the rest of the world, youth is breaking with tradition, with Western ideals being imitated. Straight, long, synthetic hair is in vogue. On all corners of Bamako, hand-painted signs advertising scores of various hairstyles catch one's eye. Advertisements even hang in trees on the roadside in residential areas. Underneath these signs sit tresseurs, just as braiders in the former French colonies are depicted. Street braiders offer the cheapest prices. At the other end of the scale are hip stylists in exquisite salons who charge prices up to 150 euros. Such luxurious hairstyles are out of the question for housemaid Rose Traoré. She can only afford the cheaper variety, worth between two and four euros. Rose visits the street braiders around the corner, but not just any old one. There are braiders whose hands aren't good. As well as cutting your hair, they also cut you and your head gets sick too. Therefore, you must only choose one person to style your hair. Rose is out of luck. Her braider has disappeared. An unknown woman is sitting at the roadside. Rose negotiates the price with her. At least she pretends to, but secretly Rose is studying this unknown person's hands carefully. They appear to be bad. What a disaster. However, she doesn't let on. An impossible dilemma as Rose has an important appointment the following morning at a photo studio. Her family in Burkina Faso are supposed to get a portrait of her. Rose has managed to keep her appointment with the photographer Malik Sidibe. Sometime in the middle of the night, her braider had reappeared and shown pity. 
It is her first photo shoot. Not only that, but it is with Malik Sidibe, one of Africa's greatest photographers, who's been capturing the history of his country on negative for over 50 years. In 2007, the Eye of Bamako, as he likes to be known, received a Golden Lion Award for lifetime achievement at the Venice Biennale. OK, wait. That's good. Good to laugh. Look at me, laugh. Ready? Yes, that's good. After work is done, Malik Sidibe sits outside his studio and waits for custom, as he has done for over 50 years. At the same time, he chats regularly with colleagues, like Hassim Keita, who often comes by for a chat. In Mali, this pastime is called Kozeri. The women from the different regions of Mali wear different braids. Yes, that's true. There's Bobo, there's Bobo, Mianga, Senofu, Bamera. Yes, that way one can see where someone is from. With the help of braiding, one can tell a woman's ethnic group. The hairstyle also shows her age and social standing. But when she braids her hair like this, with a hairpin, it means she's an old woman. I've seen with a dog on that a woman on her period has a special hairstyle. Yes, that's correct. And a woman who's just given birth, and a woman who's just lost her husband. Yes. Yes, there is braiding for a woman who's just lost her husband. You've got to value a woman's beauty. That's a woman's right. What's a woman's right if it's not her beauty? <laughs> her beauty. She's there for her beauty. Well, from the day they're born, girls wear braids, even after death. There are even hairstyles for dead women. Yes, yes. Before she goes to her grave. Yes, that's true. My cameras are ageless and work as well as the day I got them. Only the photographer gets old says Malik Sidibe about mortality. Over the years, his cameras have captured a wide variety of ethnic groups in a range of phases of their lives, which are often accompanied by rituals. With the Tuareg nomads, when a girl completes the transition from childhood to becoming a young woman, she receives her first braiding. I was also initiated this way, and back then there was a very pretty braiding that I had always wished for. But before this initiation, I wasn't allowed it. I had no right to it. Now I could finally get this braiding, and I believe that the lady who styled me used too much butter for the hair, I don't know if maybe also some milk or something else was in the butter. Sand was glued to the end of the braids so that they sat well. That night I slept, but was suddenly woken as my hair came to life. I scratched, and it felt like ants or other insects were dancing in my hair. My mother switched on a torch and saw that huge black ants had attacked me. I screamed, and the women around me fell into panic. Eventually, they helped me to get rid of the intruders. That is the memory of my first braiding during my initiation into adulthood. After this eerie experience, businesswoman Keltum Senhauser, who was married to a Swiss man, was never again able to let the topic of hair go. Maybe for this reason she counts a hair salon among her numerous activities. 
There, much time is devoted to contemporary hair techniques in a very creative attempt to harmonize tradition and modernism. Asatu Konate, who works in gastronomy and attaches much importance to appearance, is visiting Keltum's salon for the first time. A colleague gave her the hot tip. The fashion-conscious Malian doesn't yet know which hair creation to choose and therefore turns to stylist Jérôme for advice. Could you do me this style? Yes, I could do that. First, let's see if there are enough hair extensions for that. Well, this could work. Could work. There aren't very many. OK. OK, we'll try. OK, like this model. Yes, like that model. Pleasantries are rarely exchanged in Malian hair salons. Just as in all of West Africa, private matters are seldom discussed with strangers. So Asatu chooses to remain silent. First of all, her short hair is interwoven around her head, and later, strands of synthetic hair are stitched in. European long hairstyles are in vogue. This is a problem as African hair typically takes the form of short curls. Keltum, the owner of a hair salon, believes that her fellow countrymen are far too quick to blindly accept the ways of the Western world. We often rate things which come from abroad as superior to something which comes from ourselves. That is Africa's problem. If you borrow your neighbor's mirror, he will ask for it back one day. Then you will be left without a mirror. In any case, you don't see yourself in the mirror, but only your neighbor. At the hairdresser, patience is required. Asatu's hair model whose look can be located somewhere between Rasta Lady and Rocker Babe, needs four hours. And she's lucky. Other hairdressers can cost you a whole day, especially when fine natural hair has to be woven in or tiny braids plaited. Asa too doesn't waste a thought on whether the splendid mane will fit under the plastic cap that she has to wear in her job as a dessert chef. While the hair salons predominantly offer modern hair techniques, the braiders on the Marché de Tresse dedicate themselves to traditional braiding. This is a marketplace full of creativity, bursting with new ideas, celebrating female beauty. If you're talking about beauty in Mali, the nationally renowned journalist Ami Traoré will be there. She is one of the organizers of the only hair braiding competition in Africa. Penda Zidi Bey won the competition last year. She traveled to Abidjan to represent Mali. Her mother was also a braider. She was always at her side from the age of 10 and learned her trade bit by bit. At 20, she became a professional braider who earned her living through it. 1978, right? 
1978, she braided the hair of her very first customer. With a hairstyle that's called bolognier. That is how a bolognier looks. Back then, she earned around 25 cents for it. Today, she works for around 12 euros. Ten times more. Nowadays, Penda Sidibe is one of the most famous braiders in the country and can style six customers per day. The braiders are rich. If you make around 12 euros times six per day, The uncertainty of being a braider is that one never knows how many customers one will get. Today, for example, is Saturday, and one can, from experience, expect three or four customers. But five days can also pass without one single job. Then they start to think a lot about changing careers. However, I wouldn't encourage them to do this. If these women give up, who will make us beautiful? <laughs> Overlaying strands of hair have to be burnt off. In the process, poisonous fumes are given off. Her eyes are hurting just now. As well as this, many customers get headaches. Beauty has no price, claim the braiders from the Marché de Tresse, who also style ministers and presidents' wives. The hairstyle accentuates the face. An unstyled woman is only half a woman. Everything changes with braiding and you become young. Far away in Tuareg land, the Sahara region of Mali, Niger and Algeria, beauty plays an equally important role. Always on the lookout for fresh pastures for their herds, the nomads move through the great deserts of the world. It's a lonely existence, one that requires a lot of effort when family gatherings are imminent. For instance, when a wedding is celebrated. One must put up with long journeys, simply just to extend an invitation. Abdullah Hanufa left his camp six days ago. The nomad is looking for his cousins, who are to be invited to the wedding of a niece. In order to find them, he reads the camel tracks in the sand. Every Tuareg knows the prints of his animals as well as those from relatives and friends. The sought-after relatives are camped in the shade of a rock face. Tea is prepared to welcome guests. Besides chewing tobacco, this is the only luxury in the Tuareg land. Three glasses must be drunk, the first as bitter as death, the second as strong as life, and the third as sweet as love. Ahmed, in a month's time there's a wedding at Adauda. You're invited. Oh, good. God willing, and as long as work allows it, I'll come. In the meantime, a completely different wedding is being prepared in the busy metropolis of Bamako. Madina Asalat treats a friend, whose niece is getting married, to a special braiding. This noble gesture comes as a great relief. The friend has a large family and just about gets by on her husband's meagre salary. In Africa generally, no one who turns up hungry at the door is turned away and hunger is commonplace in Mali. The country is one of the ten poorest in the world.
If there was no poverty, every woman would go to the Breda every weekend. Every woman wants to be beautiful, if only crisis and poverty didn't get in the way. The braiders that Medina has ordered are notorious for their extraordinary craft. This style was once called kosoro. In Bambara, this means well braided. Once these braids weren't made of synthetic hair, but one took the bark of a specific tree, cracked it, treated it, and braided it in order to work it into the style. In modern times, this has been changed and synthetic hair is used. Times also change in other aspects. I was 12 when I was last shaved. A Songrai woman who lived next door asked my mother why. My mother told her that I would get strong and have long hair this way. But today, with modern development, one rarely sees a girl between 10 and 16 who has been shaved. I have my young daughter, who's already well-styled. <laughs> that is child braiding. Only children are styled like this. Until she got used to this, she cried every time. But now she likes it, she doesn't cry anymore. She leaves the house on her own, goes to the braider and comes back. Every ethnic group has its own traditional hairstyles. Even when marrying into another ethnicity, one stays true to one's ancestry. I am Tuareg. My husband is Dogon. But I have never had a dog on style done. It's no wonder that Madina keeps to the hairstyles of her people. They can only be braided into women with shoulder length hair and are therefore very special. After five hours, the braider has completed the complicated hairstyle. In the Tuareg land, the wedding day is approaching. The preparations are hitting full speed. In the townhouse of a cousin of the bride, the necessary henna leaves are being ground. The bride and groom are nowhere to be seen. They must stay hidden within the bosom of their families for a week before the start of the festivities. I prefer weddings in the desert because you get camel dancing and tender music. The Tuareg ceremonies are the same as in the past, whereas in the cities the celebrations are no longer very traditional. Far away from the city, the women of the bride's family dig holes in the sandy, stony ground and set up the bridal tent. The mother of the bride's song sounds for the first time at this wedding and summons the daughter to have patience as a married woman. The song also describes the mother's pain in having to leave her daughter and warns the bridegroom, my daughter is the dearest thing that I possess. I actually don't want to give her to anyone, but she chose you and loves you very much. So I expect that you will always give her the best, that you will pamper her with sweet dates and never bring bitter fruits. Marriage is beautiful for me as it is for every woman. I will now have my own house, children and a husband. Like his wife, the bridegroom waits for the first meeting after sunset. And like her, he must stay hidden away from the gaze of the other guests in another tent with his own friends and wazir. 
الوزير هرت مدان ورسين على الساس تجيه نغورنا الوزير's job is to be at the bridegroom's side to advise him and the wazir also takes care of the male guests during the wedding Oh, to know that I have the wazir at my side gives me strength. He's experienced. He can teach me many things I must understand for my wedding. The bridegroom is carrying an old sword. Such swords, which the Tuareg call takuba, have been passed down from father to son for centuries. Some swords even have their own name. According to tradition, it's extremely important that the bridegroom carries a takuba. He protects the bride from evil spirits with his sword. At the break of dawn, the family make their way to the bride's camp with a slaughtered camel, which is offered as a traditional bridal gift. Family members are there, ready to welcome them. The women of the bride's family beat the tender drum. The heavy wood mortar is converted into a drum for the festivities. They call the proud riders to do the ulugan, the name for the camel dance in the Tuareg language. No man can resist such a bait for long. The bride doesn't join in any of the commotion going on outside the tent. She even modestly conceals her face behind a shawl and doesn't make a sound. On this day, it is forbidden to say a word. Not that the Tuareg would generally say much, but it is a matter of manners and honour to comply with the regulations at a wedding. These regulations are called ashek and are very strict. In the meantime, an aunt braids the bride's hair. Today she will get the hairstyle of a married woman for the first time in her life. <coughs> what does Tuakin mean? The Tuakin shows the generosity of the bridegroom. The Tuakin comes in the form of a cash gift sent by the bridegroom whilst the bride has her hair braided. Later, the money goes to the braider. Many Tuareg claim that a bride who doesn't receive a Tuarkint will lose her hair. Everybody is relieved. The tea boy, as is expected, has secretly slipped the cousin a Tuarkint. It turns out to be generous, around 30 euros. A simple labourer earns the equivalent of 5 euros per day. Outside, the riders are still not tired. At full gallop, ever closer to the singer, courage and elegance are displayed to try to win the affections of the lady. In the bridal tent, the bride's hands and feet are painted with henna paste, which will later dye the skin red. Henna makes one look pretty. We believe that henna brings luck and blessing. According to Tuareg tradition, after the application of the wedding henna, the bride is considered a married woman 
and becomes the mistress of the tent. In the event of a divorce, which can be demanded at any time by either side, the man must move out and sleep outdoors, just like every bachelor in the region. The sun moves ever faster westwards towards the horizon. The bridegroom continues to wait motionlessly in his tent, while his chosen one is dressed for her first encounter with him as a married woman. At the weekend, the Miss Yayo Roba contest will take place. The beauty contest will be shown on national television and stands out from the usual beauty pageants. Every contestant must weigh at least 80 kilograms. This campaign is trying to confront the slimming craze, which has been escalating in Mali for a few years. Baroque-style heavyweights should be feted. Adja Ratu Sanogo, a girl from the village, has managed to make it to the final ten contestants. She discusses the upcoming event with her friend while quickly styling an acquaintance. This earns her some money to go towards her apprenticeship as a customs officer. What does it mean to be Miss Yaoroba? It's a mistitle. Ami Traoré invented Miss Yaoroba. Yes, but I don't know that word. What does Miss Yaoroba mean? It is a word from around here. We often call plump characters the Yaoroba. That is why this name was chosen. How do you walk when you're introduced to the audience? I'll just walk there. Yes, just like that. Yeah, but without hang-ups. No, without hang-ups. I don't want you to be shy in front of the audience. No. I don't want you to be shy in front of the audience. No. Only two days until the beauty contest. The friends give extensive advice about strategies which could help Ajaratu to victory. Ajara! Ajara, Sanogo! Do it like this. Because if you stand in front of the audience shaking like that, you'll bring shame on us. At this moment, I will drop dead on the spot. Look, I'll dance. I'll also showcase myself. See how's that? Adja, look at me. This is how you'll do it. Yes, exactly. Adja Ratu, Adja Ratu. Exactly. That's exactly how we'll do it then. <laughs> Watch me closely. Watch me. I will sit in the audience in front of you. You won't cry. You'll stand on stage with a beaming smile. I'll cheer you on. Adja, Adja. And then you do it like that. Look. <laughs> a hip hair salon is responsible for the hair and makeup of all Miss Yaya Roba contestants. Peter Biaka runs the company alongside his wife. He finds new ideas for hairstyles on television or on the internet. Young females in Bamako rate the visionary man from the Ivory Coast above all because of his flashy creations containing colorful synthetic hair. That doesn't concern Adjaratu right now. Her hair simply needs to be unbraided and unraveled and subsequently left to rest for at least 24 hours. Otherwise, the hairstyle, which will be the same for all 10 contestants, cannot be braided. Adja, they say Saturday is going to be hot. Oh, yes. <laughs> Lots of girls, eh? Yes, that's true. So how do you see it this year? Big moment for you. Yes. This year I will win, God willing. Ah, you're going to win? There are ten of us in total. Ah, there are ten of you? Thus I will do everything in order to win this year. 
So what leads you to believe that you'll win this year? Me? Yes, you. I will just be brave. So let's start with the unravelling. What? I said let's start with the unravelling. Okay. Will your fan club be there on Saturday? Yes, yes. Will there be people coming to support you? Yes, all my friends. All my friends will be coming. Ah, all your friends. Yes, one is... Here already? Yes. She even travelled from Guinea. Oh, great, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> then your fan club has reached international status if it's reached Guinea? Yes, yes. Yeah, then it's going to be really hard. Yes, yes. The choreography for Miss Yayoroba needs to be practiced. Rehearsals go on until late in the night. Adjaratu's friend desperately needs material for a dress from the Marché de la Médine. She also wants to make a spectacular contribution to support her contestant through her appearance. The dull sound of cloth drums can be heard from a distance as starch is hammered into the brightly coloured cotton damask. Only through this sweaty work can the materials shine perfectly and produce that peculiar rustling which characterises every ganila, the name given to this kind of damask in West Africa. Spoiled for choice, Adjaratu and her friend comb through the wide variety of Ganila material and quickly find something. The price negotiations, however, drag on. While the haggling at the Marché de la Médine goes on, the first of Bamako's inhabitants set off for home, exhausted from their day's work, to grant themselves a well-deserved rest. School children have dropped their books off at home, taken off their school clothes, and imitate the heroes of hip music videos on the streets. Adjaratu and her friend attempt to relieve those last moments of tension. Can she achieve her goal tomorrow and become Miss Yayoroba? To ensure fairness, all contestants have the same hairstyle. The deciding moment is upon us. Who will become Miss Yayoroba 2010? Adjaratu is determined to give everything. Is it a good omen that she drew the number 10? What are her chances of winning? Experts whose opinion is being heard behind the scenes are by no means entirely convinced of Adjaratu's talent. Ami Traoré opens up the evening's Miss Yayoroba contest. Contestants must not only shine in several different garments on the catwalk, but also prove their quick wittedness and general knowledge on the microphone afterwards. Hey, 
Adja Ratu acquits herself extremely well with a brilliant recall of Malian colonial history. At the end of her appearance, she celebrates the fact that 2010 signifies 50 years of independence from France. Miss Yayuroba in the 50th year of independence is number 10. Number 10. Number 10, Ajaratu Sanugu. Ajaratu Sanugu. Ajaratu has won despite all the prophecies of doom. First prize is a brand new scooter, which represents a small fortune for a young woman in Bamako. Out in the Tuareg land, the waiting has come to an end. The encounter between bride and bridegroom is just moments away. Family and guests are standing in front of the wedding tent, into which the couple has withdrawn. A few bold figures risk a last dance as darkness descends over the vast land.